Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem. Minimum one bit operations to make an integer zero. This is definitely a hard problem. This is definitely a mathematical problem. And I know how much you guys like math and that's exactly why I'm gonna try to, instead of giving you like a mathematical proof of this problem, which if even if I give it to you, and even if it's perfectly correct, like that doesn't give you the intuition of how to solve this problem. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on. Not so much on the math, or at least as little of the math as I have to, because yes, this problem is mathematical in nature. You can't really avoid that for this problem. So first, what I like to do is just learn the rules of the game. Get familiar with them. We have an integer n. In this case, it's three and we're doing bit operations. So let's remember how, what a three looks like in binary, it looks like I think one, one, uh, just a count. This is of course zero. This is one, this is two, and this is three. That's where I'm getting it from. We can only do two different operations. We can either change the rightmost bit. So we're always able to change the one's place. So if we swap it now, we will change it to one zero. If we were to change it now, we can change it to one one. So in a way, we can either add one or subtract one from whatever number we have. So we have three, we can either, or in this case, I actually had it backwards, this is subtracting one. So we can change this into a two, and then we can change it back into a three. The other operation is a bit complicated, actually. We can only change, like an arbitrary bit. We can change any bit in this number, and let's actually change the number to make it bigger. Let's make it a thousand. We can change any of these bits, if and only if, uh, let's take this bit for example, if the bit to the right of it is a one and every bit to the right of that is a zero, then we're allowed to swap this bit. So we would be allowed to then change it to a one. And if it was already one, then we could change it into a zero. So that's the second uh, way we can change bits. So think about that. Which of these bits currently are we allowed to change? Can we change this one? No, it's right neighbor isn't one. Can we change this one? Nope, right neighbor, not one. Can we change this one? Nope, right neighbor, not one. But if we had a one here, then we actually could. We could flip this guy into a zero. Now, if you were to play around with this and try to make this number into zero, you would notice it's gonna take quite a few steps. For example, for us to change this bit over here, we know we need a one in this spot. How do we do it? Well, for us to do that, we need a one in this spot, don't we? Yup. And for us to do that, for us to turn this into a one, we need a one in this spot. Well, that's the only one we can change. So let's go ahead and change that now. We get one, zero, zero, one. Cool. Now. We can change this bit as well, but that would just be taking us back here. And we're technically now allowed to change this one as well. It's right bit is one and there's nothing really to the right of that. So we're good here. We can make this a one, one, one. One very, very important observation to make is we will always have at most two choices. If that is not clear to you yet, think about this for a second. It's kind of a proof by contradiction because look at it. We know like we can change this bit. It's an X bit. It doesn't matter if it's a zero or a one, only if the bit to the right of it is one and everything else to the right of that is zero. Cool. So we can change this guy. Perfect. Now, of course, we can't change this bit because there's not a one to the right of it. What about the rest of these? Of course, can't do those either because they're all zeros. There's no one to the right of them. Now, it makes sense why we can't change these, but also there's no way we can change any of the bits to the left over here because even if one of them has a right bit that happens to be one, there's no way all of these are zeros because there's gonna be a one over here. So we only have at most two choices that we can make at any given point in time. So what are those two choices in this case? We can always change the zeroth bit. We can always make this a zero if we want to. 
And the other choice is we can make this guy now a zero if we want to. But if we were to do that, we're just going backwards. So at this point, it's pretty straightforward what we should do. We're going to do one, zero, one, zero. And now what's the next move? We can either change this one or we can change this one. So we're going to do this one and we're going to get one, 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 zero. And now we're going to end up changing this. So we're kind of just alternating, aren't we? We're always alternating because if we were to make the same like swap the same bit twice we'd be going in reverse order so notice how we're always doing this we're always changing the zeroth bit and then we're changing a different bit then we change the zeroth bit then we change a different bit then we change the zeroth bit so now continuing we finally are getting close to what we wanted we finally put a one over here but now we have to zero both of these out if we want to be able to swap the most significant bit here so now since we uh, just swapped this bit we're going to alternate we're going to swap the other bit that we can which is only this one so we're going to get one one zero one and now we're going to go back to swapping this bit we're going to get one one zero zero and finally look what we can do now we we've, we've got it into the form that we wanted we can finally change the most significant bit we're going to get zero one zero zero okay so well we uh, changed the most significant bit like we finally got from here down to here now my argument to you is we always want to change the most significant bit first because look at this, like look at what we have. Like these are kind of every single number with every single thing that we could create with four possible positions. Notice how there's eight of these. That's not a coincidence. We went through every single number that we could have created with four bits, but this is not a coincidence. Notice how if like we had, we started with this guy and we were like, no, I'm not gonna change. Where I'm, my goal is not to change this bit. I'm gonna first zero out this one. I'm gonna go here. Well, notice how we just went backwards. And if I were to do the same thing, Thing with any of these like my goal is not to change this one it's to remove this okay well in that case we actually did end up uh, getting closer to the solution here but the whole point of going here is to then eventually go here and then go here we're, we're ultimately always trying to uh, remove the most significant bit and then so you can uh, break this up into like sub problems think of it this way we want to remove the most significant bit no matter how many operations it takes and then we want to uh, remove the rest then we want to zero out the rest of what we have and that is the sub problem so our goal is basically zero out the most significant bit wherever it happens to be if this happened to be our starting point our goal would still be the same our goal is to zero out this bit and then whatever we have left we're going to zero that out so i guess then the question becomes well how many steps does it take to zero out the most significant bit. Let's consider the simple case here where we start with that significant bit and the rest of these are zeros. In this case, it took us eight steps. So if we say that this is the zeroth bit, this is the one bit, this is the two bit, and this is the three bit, let's say that the, we say K is where like the most significant bit is, which is here, position three in this case, then we found that at least from starting with one, the most significant bit and then all zeros, we take two to the power of K, which was a, at least in this case. Now, is that something like we can extrapolate to other examples as well? Let's think about it. Let's look at this one, zero, zero. How many steps did it take us to get here anyway? How many steps would it take us to remove the one here? Well, we can actually just go backwards. We can look up and say here, one, and then two, three, four steps to go backwards where the zero, th where that bit was finally removed. And since we only have two decisions we can make at any given point in time, Going backwards is gonna take us the same number of steps as going forward. So that is something we can extrapolate. So if we have some like number one, zero, 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 whatever, and this is the kth bit, then it's gonna take us two to the power of k to zero that guy out. So we have now sort of solved a simplified version of this problem where we have a number that looks like this, one, zero, zero, zero. And in other words, this is, a power of two so uh, like think of it this way like we'd have a one or we could have a one zero or a one zero zero basically we're taking that a one and shifting it possibly to the left each time 
or and that's equivalent to just adding zeros to this. So that is a power of two, two to the power of K. Think of it as that because uh, two to the power of zero is gonna be equal to one, two to the power of one is gonna be equal to two, two to the power of two is gonna be equal to four, et cetera, et cetera. So whatever number we have, like if we have a power of two, the number of steps it takes to remove the most significant bit is two to the power of K, but that's not solving the entire problem. That just removes the most significant bit. And then we have the remainder left over. What's the remainder gonna look like? It looks like to me, two to the power of K minus one, because we just took this number one with three zeros and turned it into a one with two zeros down here. So now we have to do that as well. Like the total number of steps it takes to reduce this to a zero is gonna be two to the power of k plus two to the power of k minus one plus two to the power of k minus two plus etc etc right it's it's gonna go like that this is called a mathematical series and you want to know where you might have seen something that looks like this before believe it or not with binary trees this is going to keep going until eventually we get to a one and that would of course look like a bunch of zeros with just a one bit and then the last thing we do is flip that one bit so that's what this math series is going to look like and i know honestly just off the top of my head from looking at something like this that this is a equivalent to two to the power of K plus one minus one. The reason for that is because I'm pretty familiar with binary trees. You look at a binary tree like this, you have uh, one node, then you get two nodes, then you get four nodes, right? You double each level of the tree. And this is always gonna be uh, two to the power of how many levels we have, which is three minus one. It's gonna be eight minus one. and it might not be clear why this is equivalent to that because it's not really going top down, it's going bottom up. You can think of this as the last level in the tree. This is the next level. And when we finally get to one, that's like the root of the tree. So I know it's not super mathematical why this is equivalent to that, but I think like the intuition of binary trees is actually more helpful. I could give you the math proof, but I don't think that would even explain it. Okay, so now we have the math formula of solving only the simplified problem. It's two to the K plus one minus one. So anytime we're given a power of two, this is the formula. This is how many steps it takes, but we might not be given a power of two. We might be given something that looks like this. What if this was our starting point? Well, notice how, and this kind of goes back to the beginning intuition that I was talking about, notice how this includes every possibility in between these, uh, assuming like this bit stays as one, because we had eight steps here. We kind of went through every combination of these first three bits, didn't we? And we also talked about how we can only go in sort of two directions. We can go backwards or we can go forward. Well, given that, I'm going to say that the solution to this problem in terms of like sub problems and all that is going to be this. Like, let's say we arbitrarily started here. This is the starting point. I'm going to say, well, we need to zero out this bit. We know that it takes this many steps. If we were to start from up there, I'm going to use a different color just to be more clear because this has gotten a bit messy and that's just because this is a really hard problem and I'm sorry for that, but this is how many steps it would take from here to uh, get down there. But we didn't start here, did we? We started over here. So we kind of took a shortcut, actually. We took extra. So we don't, like, how do we do that mathematically? How do we make this number smaller? Well, usually to make numbers smaller, there's not addition, there is the subtraction operation. Okay, but what do we subtract? Like I said, to go from here down to here is equivalent from going from here back up here. So if we're doing that, what we're now asking is, okay, number of steps it would take to make this down here is this much, but we actually took a shortcut. We took this much of a shortcut. So in other words, we're asking how much is it going to take for us to go from here, removing this bit, how much is it going to take for us to go from here back 
up here. And in this case, it's three steps, but like the exact number isn't important. But what, that's what we're saying. Like, how much does it take to zero this out? And that's what we're going to be subtracting from here. We're taking this sub problem now and subtracting it from our result. So that is the intuition of this problem. Now I'm going to get into the code. Well, I guess before I do that, let me quickly just dry run through it. That was most of the intuition. I'm going to quickly just walk through how we're going to solve this problem now and quickly explain the time complexity. So the algorithm is going to be like this. We're going to find the most significant bit, the digit. We're calling that K. Then our answer becomes this, 2 to the power of K plus 1 minus 1, um, and then subtracting from that the recursive algorithm. We're going to call our own algorithm recursively, and what are we going to pass in? We're going to pass in the remaining digits. If they're all zeros, then of course this is going to return zero. But if we were to have started like from here, we're going to pass these remaining digits into that guy. How do we get those remaining digits? Well, assuming we found the most significant digit K, we can get these digits by just taking like, for example, we have one, one, uh, one, zero, one, one, and then a one, zero, zero. We can take this, use the XOR operation. And then from that, we will be left with these remaining digits, which is zero, one, one. So all we need is the most significant bit that will easily get us uh, these remaining uh, numbers, and then we'll pass that in to this function. So that's how we're going to solve it. In terms of time complexity, for us to find the kth most significant bit, we're going to have to possibly traverse over the entire uh, number, which is actually just going to be log base two of n. So not super inefficient. And how high is the recursive call stack going to be? Well, for each a function call, we will remove at most like the most significant digit. We might have to remove every single digit. So the height of the recursion is also going to be log base two of n. So the solution just becomes these two numbers multiplied by each other in terms of memory and in terms of space. Of course, this is the call stack space, so that's going to be the uh, space complexity. So now let's finally code this up. Okay, so jumping into the code, we know we want to find the position of the most significant bit, which we're calling k. And initially, I'm going to set that to zero. But one thing I actually didn't mention is that what is the base case of this recursion going to be? Because uh, base cases are pretty important when it comes to recursion. I think you can probably guess it's when n reaches zero, because of course, that's like our goal here in the first place. So when n is equal to zero, let's go ahead and return the number of steps it's going to take to make it zero, which you can also probably guess is zero. So now, how do we find the most significant bit? Well, while two to the power of k. So like this is the position of the most significant bit and two to the power of k is the number that that bit is going to form while this is less than or equal to the current number that we're at. What I'm going to do is increment k. So you tell me when is the loop going to stop? Probably when this is no longer true, which means we actually shifted K too far. We made K bigger than N. So what we do right after the loop is just decrement K. And then we return the solution, which we probably can't really intuitively figure out by looking at it. That's why like the drawing explanation is so important. And we found that the formula is two to the power of K plus one minus one minus self dot minimum one bit operations. That's just the name of this function that we're in. And how do we get the remaining bits with the exclusive or operator, which is going to take the current number, uh, which is two to the power of K and then exclusive or it with our input number N and that will give us the remaining number. So that's the whole code. Not a lot of code for a very long explanation, but please don't let this fool you. This is a very, very hard problem. Now let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, it does, and it is relatively efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.